What's going on guys? This is Davis and today we're going to be answering the question Can you feasibly use a 2008 Mac Pro in 2019? Let's get into it All right, everybody, so this is it. Uh, the 2008, or early 2008 Mac Pro. Um, it's got dual Intel Xeon server pro server grade processors hidden behind uh, some heat shielding there. Uh, it's got 16 gigs of DDR2, <laughs> D yes, DDR2 RAM in there. Um, and right now, for whatever reason, it's only recognizing 14, so I think one of my sticks might be bad. Um, this computer's actually been sitting in a basement uh, for the last, I don't know, year or so. Uh, I used it at one point for college, but uh, then eventually I just went through and retired it. So there it sat until uh, until the other day when I uh, when I hauled it up from my parents' place to, uh, to the apartment. Um, so I figured, why not see if we can uh, actually do something with this? Uh, we're going to be putting it through a few different tests. Uh, I think I've got a couple different games installed we're going to try um, and I'm going to go through and see if I can do my normal workload uh, which includes video editing uh, along with uh, 3D modeling and Autodesk Inventor so we're going to see if we can try to get that on here um, and we're going to see how that works uh, currently trying to go through got to, got to pull up here in the ultra wide uh, and I'm copying everything from the internal hard drive to uh, an SSD that I just installed so I will uh, get that done, and then I'm going to go through and check in once I got everything installed. Okay, so for, before I forget, uh, this also has a uh, GTX 680, a 680 in there with 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, before I do anything, I want to pull up the About This Mac screen. There you go, so you can kind of see that, because I don't want to forget to do that. Uh, like I said, the, du the, the dual Xeon processors, like I said, it's not recognizing one of the sticks. We only got 14 gigs of RAM, but yeah, I'll check in in a bit. All right, everybody. So the first thing that we're going to do here is a boot time test. So I'm going to go ahead and press the power button. And you'll hear the startup chime. And we've got everything installed on that SSD, so it should be a relatively quick process. And you're not going to see the boot logo or anything because of that uh, GTX 680. It's not officially supported by Apple, so it doesn't uh, it it doesn't show the boot logo. All right, booted up. I'll include a little timer in there so you guys can kind of see about how long that took, but not too bad. Uh, there's some startup applications in here that are still starting from. Um, from the last period of time I was using this computer, so I'm not really sure what that is, but we're just going to ignore it. Um, Alright, I'm going to go ahead and switch over into the computer itself, and we're going to go ahead and take a look to see what this thing can do. Alright everybody, so here you can see we have, um, we have Final Cut Pro opened up, um, and I've been pleasantly surprised. I've been kind of just scrubbing through the, the, the footage, and it seems like it's transitioning smoothly and it's not really it's not really like freezing at all and this is coming through the um, through the internal computer built-in computer speaker sounds very meh but what do you expect but um, yeah so I seems like it's pretty decent I'm not really sure on export times yet uh, but um, I'll uh, I'll try to remember to post that in the comments what the uh, what the export time on this video ends up being, um, and yeah, that'll be a pretty good indicator on how it uh, how it performs. But I'm sure it's going to be quick. Uh, I mean, based on these are it, this program, I'm sure is designed to take advantage of this, the eight cores across the two different processors. Um, Something I always I also wanted to mention before we get any further is that this thing is um, an absolute furnace. All right, uh, I forgot how much heat this thing produces. Uh, I I don't really know if I'll need to turn my heat on over the winter just based on the amount of heat this thing produces if I actually keep using it. Um, 
But uh, yeah, uh, another thing uh, is that uh, if you have done any research into these, you'll probably be aware uh, that th this old of them, uh, they're not. It's not compatible with the newer versions of Mac OS. So the most recent version, I think Mojave. Uh, or El Capitan, sorry, that this one has, uh, is the newest that it'll it'll install. Now, it's still new enough to run pretty much mo most new applications, uh, but, um, yeah, it, I don't know, it's it's not going to be updated in the future, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, if, if you have your software and it works and you don't have to, uh, you don't have to really upgrade for any reasons, then I don't really see why that would be a problem. Uh, but if you're more of the type of person who always has the latest and greatest software, it's probably not going to work for you. Um, and along with the uh, Autodesk Inventor install I mentioned earlier, um, I realized that the Inventor suite is only uh, only Windows. So I'll have to do some research into uh, into running like a VM or something to, to be able to run Inventor. I could use Boot Camp too, but I really don't want to have to um, but don't want to have to boot into a whole other uh, another operating system. Um, I looked into a program called Parallels uh, that I used at a job that we used to use, that I used to, well, work at, right? Um, and that program seems like it'd probably do what I want it to do, uh, but I think it's expensive. So I'll have to look into that a little bit more, and I'll get back to you on that. Uh, but I think the next thing that we're going to look, we're going to uh, investigate here. I think I have Minecraft installed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and open that up. So I really don't think that this is taking nearly advantage of all of the the ability of this old beast. But it's definitely Definitely from a different time. You very rarely see dual core setups or dual um, processor setups in computers these days. But, I mean, this was designed to be like the craziest and most extreme, right? Current resolution. So we can put it up to a reasonable 12 chunks because the 680 will be able to, to handle visualizing it it's just actually generating everything um, a good benchmark in this game to see how quickly things are, are processing is if you look and where is it um, okay um, so you see uh, right underneath the frame right there integrated server at 65 milliseconds that's a good uh, uh, that's a decent response time for a game uh, for a multiplayer game, but for a single player, it should be sub 10, 10 milliseconds, so that's kind of crappy, but it's not so bad. And I think the T right up above there is ticks per second or something. The integrate, the in game um, kind of like time system that the physics engine uses. So it's running a solid 40, 50 frames a second. It's not bad. And this right now has got 2 gigs of RAM allocated to it. Which I'm sure if you wanted to, you could add a lot more. But, I mean, it's keeping up with just flying around. Oh, look at these crazy villages. Man, I haven't played this game way too long, apparently. Huh. But anyway, yeah, it performs decent. I mean, I would be able to play this. I would definitely play this. And you can see up here in the upper right, uh, 8 Intel Xeon processors. It's epic. All right, not bad. Let's move on to something else. All right, so now we're gonna go through and just run a nice little disk speed check on um, the SSD that I have installed in there. Uh, just simply to like, it's it's very reminiscent of the capa of the capacity of the SSD, but this is just to demonstrate a, ch uh, a performance that you can achieve. Now you can get much faster than this if you use like a. Uh, um, what you, what you call it? A um, uh, you can you think you can use a NVMe SSD in there, right into the um, into the ports on the inside of the computer. Um, I mean that's a little bit extreme for a computer like this, 
but it's you could do it, right? All right, so the last thing I've got for you guys today is a is running the Valley benchmark. Uh, now this is a very high end benchmark uh, GPU benchmark. Uh, it's set to a lower quality, set to medium, uh, simply because this is an older processor or older video card, right? My 680. It's and we're at the end of the 11 1100 series now, right? 1200 new series coming next year, so definitely, uh, definitely really old, but as you will to see here, still capable of uh, producing some pretty decent results. You can hear the sound coming through the speakers over there. And it looks like it's running between 10 and 15 frames a second. Definitely chugging, definitely chugging. I think that's a lot due to the uh, lack of video memory. It's only got two gigs, so uh, that'll cause that chug um, because it's not able to store all the visual data, having to transfer it back and forth from the RAM, which causes uh, overutilization of the RAM bus and uh, choppiness. So you can see it's not too bad. It's keeping a decent temperature. Oh, that's a nice, nice demonstration. All right, getting out of there. So yeah, um, I'll post the uh, the render times in the uh, in the description below. Uh, but I really, uh, really hope you enjoyed this uh, this look into a um, into a a really a, a computer that was a beast of its time. Um, I, I don't know exactly what this would have ran new, uh, but I, I can't really envision it being much less than $10,000. Uh, it was really um, as good as it gets during its time. So it I, I would like to say that it does hold up pretty well, actually, um, even, even today, right? Like this was made in 2008, so 10 years ago, it still holds up. It's still able to do pretty much anything that you'll throw at it. I mean, 4K um, video editing, probably not going to work real good for you uh but really anything other than that you wouldn't i don't think you'd have too much of a problem with but anyway hope you enjoyed have a great day